Martin, here we are. Here we are. This Sunday, we've got Luke 8, 22 to 25. Yep. Jesus in the boat during a storm or when a storm comes up and he's asleep in the boat and the disciples panicked, awake him. What do you make of this particular passage in its details? That's a very precise question. <laughs> so I tell you two things, because I, 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 there are all sorts of things we can make of this. Mm. Uh, uh, and so two, two particular things. Uh, first of all, uh, the the stormy waters, even in our own contemporary idiom, uh, but certainly in Jesus' day and in uh, uh, probably through the centuries, has been an image for chaos, for Rahab the sea monster and all that and yeah. wickedness. Yeah. Mm. So, so that that Jesus calms chaos. I think order. is order, yeah, and and is and is really for me is a really important thing to hear um, in the world we're in at the moment, in our kind of bewildering emergence from uh, the pandemic, uh, in indeed in the kind of rather testy fractiousness that we're seeing in corners of the church. Uh, and in the ways in which um, I think there's you know, a tendency for some people coming out of the pandemic to say, oh, let's make more chaos and then we can start all over again and sort out the problems. Uh, uh, and Jesus here is very, very much the one who calms the chaos mm. um, and, and calms it for uh, the disciples who... Uh, seemed not not to understand why he, he was going to be a, he was asleep when this happened, um, and and then you've got this interesting thing where he he says to the disciples, "Where is your faith?" And I think I'm right. In the Greek, there is no verb. It's where your faith, where your faith. And and there could be a verb. It's mm. not not not. I don't think it's a, uh, a sort of Greek idiom. Uh, and and I get a sense from that that what Jesus is not saying is, so why on earth did you wake me up? Where was your faith? Or uh, or or is saying where where is your faith? Uh, when you know surely you you will believe that uh, all will be well and. So, so it wasn't a generalised sense, but he, he's not asking about where the faith in them is. It's where do they, in whom do they locate their faith? Their response is, who is this man who mm. even the wind and the waves obey? Which said, Jesus' question is, have you realised that your faith needs to be in me. Where your faith, uh, and and they seemingly beginning to have dawn on them that that this extraordinary person they're with is the one in whom actually they can place their faith in. Mm. Therefore, the fact that he's asleep in the boat um, means they don't need to worry about the storm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I remember. Do you remember the film *The Perfect Storm*, which was about one of the worst storms in the North Atlantic in living memory? George Clooney was a, a, a fishing boat captain. I, I mean, I spoiler alert! It. Spoiler alert! In terms of what happens, it sinks. It sinks, and he drowns, and they all drown. Right. Okay. Yeah, because okay. physics takes over. Even a seventy-foot fishing boat, if the waves bigger than the boat. Yeah. Or if the wave's bigger than the side of the boat. And it took two and a half hours to get took to the <laughs> But terrifying as mm -hmm. well, terrifying. And, you know, well, you, I don't know if you've been in a, a boat in a storm, but it's it's pretty scary stuff. 
And, and have you been in a boat? In yes, the storm? I have. Yeah, oh. and it is scary. Right. Okay. I've been very sick. You've never in a told boat. me that before. Yeah, yeah. And I think um, so. So, in, so for once, instead of knocking the disciples, I'm going to give credit to the disciples here because what do they do in the storm? They at least know where their possibility of safety and security is. So where their faith, as you say, well, at least they know to come to Jesus and wake him up mm -hmm. rather than just running around like headless chickens. And, and in relation to this, I remember uh, re reading um, about two psychiatrists who did a lot of work with the religious, with, with, with priests and monks. Uh, 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 and what they were saying is they were staggered how little of the work that they did with them the, the, the priests and the monks referred to God as being in any way kind of like contributing to their health and well-being. I mean, th they said something like two people of the dozens and dozens they came across actually spoke it in that way. And only one, a lay brother, actually consciously had this sense of, of God contributing to health and well-being. Now, I hope that the stats are higher than that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. one of the interesting things about it is in a situation of difficulty and chaos, are we those who mm. look to wake up mm. our Lord, mm. yeah, <laughs> in the chaos of our, our own lives? I suppose, and in relation to that, the, 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 the kind of example that comes to mind for me, which is a personal example, is um, uh, a nun, Sister Catherine, who took me through the Ignatian exercises when I was a vicar. And um, what happened for her was two, two of the nuns of her community had gone out to Kenya to start a school. And within the year, I mean, two of the most energetic and dynamic of the nuns, within the year, they both got malaria, come back, and uh, horribly, both died within three weeks of goodness, each other. So, so Sister Catherine was talking mm -hmm. to me after the second uh, funeral. And it was this passage in her kind of Ignatian way that she was chewing on. And she felt like Jesus was asleep in the boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She felt, but, but she also felt the tension of the fact that, you know, she needed to wake Jesus up because she was in danger of drowning here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and and, and that, that was a really interesting kind of reflection for me because um, who needs to wake up whom in, in, in situations in our life? I, I was reading somewhere recently about how in the Old Testament it said that um, uh, people keep talking about wanting to wake up God. But in the New Testament, hardly ever is it talked about waking up God. It's about mm -hmm. us waking up to yeah. God because yeah. God has yeah. acted in the incarnation yeah. but here curiously is one of the very few examples in the New Testament mm -hmm. of God in Christ needing to be woken up if mm -hmm. you like mm -hmm. and, and at the end of that conversation with Sister Catherine I, I remember her rather casually saying maybe I'm being called to Kenya mm -hmm. uh, and part of me wanted to immediately say oh, no you're not you're the good you meant to be here but but it was really interesting you know am I awake to the one who is awake to me. Do you see what I mean? Well, yes, and I, and I guess uh, yeah, playing with that image, you've got uh, the the waking up of of Jesus is for whose benefit, mm. um, and uh, and can we calmly carry on in the storm because we know He's there um, without waking Him up. <laughs> Because mm. um, the waking up is an expression of panic. Mm. Uh, uh, so, oh yes, I need to think about that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.